Mr. Speaker, we know um, that fraud for many people, it has been, people have not been able to come forward because they felt the stigma, the shame, the embarrassment of dealing with fraud, like mental health, Mr. Speaker. And, and we need to do a better job to change the public's um, outlook when it comes to sharing about fraud, because fraud is something that is happening and it's, it's uh, sophisticated, it's happening because of organized crime. crime. They're using highly sophisticated uh, uh, devices and, and uh, uh, attitudes towards going after uh, vulnerable people, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Recently, a, a senior in my riding, Peggy Christian from Courtney, was scammed out of $100,000, her life savings, Mr. Speaker. She was tricked into making wire transfers in huge amounts to scammers from Thailand, uh, while her bank, Coast uh, Capital Savings on Vancouver Island, they didn't have the protocols or the safeguards in place to protect Peggy. And Peggy, who was 76 at the time, had been with Coast Capital Savings for more than 30 years. She had actually never got any transfers like this. It should have been caught, Mr. Speaker. Now Peggy's had to sell her house and cut her costs in half just to stay above water. And her bank and the Canadian government has failed to return what she's lost. This is heartbreaking and a heartbreaking story that should never have happened, Mr. Speaker. So often we know when Canadians are, are victimized by scams, the Canadian government punishes the victim, not the perpetrator. And I'm going to tell a story about that as well. In 2022, Canadian investors, as you probably heard, were swept into what has been described as a more than $300 million Ponzi scheme allegedly perpetrated by Greg Martel. And many of those investors who come from all walks of life are struggling to move on from their losses. In fact, one of my constituents, Lana McKenzie, invested in that Ponzi scheme. She's already hurting from the scam, and she was actually hit again when the CRA taxed her based on the fraudulent two fives, T5s that Lana had received from the very scammer uh, himself. So ever since then, Lana has been fighting for fairness from the CRA, and the federal government, instead of acting swiftly, has been moving incredibly slow on Lana and other victims' objections at a time when many of those victims are already financially vulnerable. And again, they're living with the shame and, and, and having to come forward with courage, and I applaud them for having the courage to move forward. Now, at the same time, we've seen no evidence that the federal government is working to return the alleged pe perpetrator, Greg Martel, from overseas so that he can face justice. Much of that stolen money has never been returned. The government hasn't used le levers through Interpol to go after him. And we know online fraud, fraud is impacting more and more Canadians. In 2022, the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, they reported they had observed $530 million in reported victim losses. And the Canadian uh, Anti-Fraud Centre also received nearly 91,000 reports from Canadians that same year. And according to the RCMP, fraud was the second largest contributor to the severity of crime last year. The rate of fraud in 2023 went up by 12% and the rate of extortion went up by 35%. It shouldn't be so easy for Canadians to get scammed, Mr. Speaker, and it shouldn't be so hard for victims to recoup their losses. And the government needs to do a lot more. We need to make sure that the banks, which benefit from these Ill illegitimate transactions, are being held to account as well. And look at the recent cases of TD in the US, which allowed criminal activity because it profited from them. In fact, there's a quote from, the, um, from Merrick Garland, the U.S. Attorney General, who said that TD had, uh, had you know, they, they, they created an environment that allowed financial crime to flourish by making its services convenient for criminals, and it became one, Mr. Speaker. That's what he had said. That's how bad it's getting. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, it's an honour to be here for our German debates with my friend and colleague from Courtney Alberni. Um, first, before I start, I'd just like to extend my sympathies to Peggy, who's experienced this, uh, this fraud in her life. Um, I've had constituents in my riding as well who have lost sizable amounts of their life savings to these heartless scammers. Uh, it's a disgusting practice, and uh, we certainly do need to find solutions. Um, you know, we carry these little devices around in our pockets now and I take it for granted that I can achieve so much on that phone. Um, but uh, people who are less familiar with that technology because it's just been in the last 5 or 10% of their lives that it's, it's become uh, commonplace to have, uh, you know, a very high-powered computer in your pocket with uh, the capacity of going on your, 
into your bank account and everything, it's, uh, it's intimidating for a lot of people. And I think that onset of that technology has caused a lot of harm across our society with respect to seniors and that fraudulent activity. So my condolences to the member's cons uh, constituent. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, fraudulent telephone calls are a significant source of concern for Canadians. They're not just annoying, they're very damaging as well. That's why our government continues to take concrete actions to combat these crimes. The Canadian Radio, Television and Communications Commission, that's Canada's, uh, that's CRTC, Canada's National Independent Telecommunications Regulator, has developed a series of requirements for industry to combat fraudulent telecommunications and help Canadians, that's help, to help protect Canadians. First, the CRTC works with telecommunications companies to block incoming scam calls. For example, the CRTC approved a proposal from Bell Canada to permanently implement a call blocking solution that uses artificial intelligence to prevent scam calls originating from outside of Canada from ever reaching Canadians. I'm happy to share that from January 2020 to 2023, this program prevented over 1.6 billion calls from reaching Canadians. That's a large number, Mr. Speaker, 1.6 billion. The CRTC also requires service providers to block calls when the originating phone number doesn't conform to a standard numbering plan, a common sign of a fraudulent call. Furthermore, the CRTC is also working to improve a call traceback solution used to trace unsolicited calls back to their point of origin. As part of this process in late February 2024, the CRTC launched public consultations to identify solutions to particular operational issues with the traceback process. We know that this approach to combating fraud, fraud calls requires close collaboration with industry, tech leaders and experts. The CRTC is also working with industry to alert Canadians if an incoming call might be part of a scam. This approach, known as STIR or S-H-A-K-E-N, works by notifying Canadians whether an incoming call originates from a real number. While it's not currently possible to authenticate all incoming calls, this approach will become more effective as telecom companies upgrade their networks and more Canadians use telephones that work with this approach. Beyond the initiatives taken by the CRTC, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Competition Bureau are responsible for the enforcement of activities. Their work is facilitated by that of the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, uh, which is jointly operated by the RCMP, the OPP and the Competition Bureau, which enables law enforcement agencies to investigate complex fraud schemes by collecting information on fraud-related issues. The government is also taking steps to enhance the quality of information on fraud in Canada by improving the processes which Canadians can report fraud. Uh, for example, the Canadian National Cyber Crime, Crime Coordination Unit and the CAFC are developing a new national crime and fraud reporting system to improve the processes used by uh, used to report fraud and cybercrime incidents to law enforcement. It's expected to be fully operational in the coming months and will help improve the quality of data on fraud in Canada, as well as making it easier for Canadians to report fraud. Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada will always work to protect Canadians and will continue to use the tools at our disposal to combat these, these crimes. Uh, but it, it goes without saying, Mr. Speaker, that we got to do more. we got to protect seniors. They're mo most commonly the victims of these crimes. And, uh, and I'm in favour of, of any action to do that. Thank you, sir. The Alba member from Courtney Alberni. Speaker, as of November 1st, Canada has introduced the Ombudsperson for Banking Services and Investments, who is meant to help resolve scam issues with banks. That's a great start, but since the Ombudsperson's recommendations are non-binding, it's only a half measure. We have a financial system which rewards criminals and costs Canadians. We need to hold big banks to account and make sure that there is a cost to doing business with criminals. We need to make it easier for Canadians to work with the CRA to correct their finances after being victims of fraud and my colleague the member from Windsor West has called for a first minister's conference to tackle cyber crime it's long time mr. speaker that the federal government takes these instances of online fraud and extortion seriously instead of just putting the burden on Canadians and Bell Rogers and tell need to be held accountable for being a portal to crime and the CRTC needs to do much more and we know the Conservatives aren't going to be going after uh, those big players, Mr. Speaker. And it's long time that the Liberals hold them to account. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, in, in the opening, I, I went as fast as I could to get through the eight, eight pages of, and details of all of the actions that this government's taken. Uh, that, that number, 1.6 billion calls, uh, which were prevented from, from you know, phones ringing, uh, we've all experienced them, the, the duct cleaning calls and the, the CRA and the scam calls. Um, fortunately, you know, most young people uh, have the wherewithal just to hang up, uh, but the victims are increasingly seniors who uh, are unfamiliar with the technology. And we've got to do more, there's no doubt, but uh, the long list of actions already taken, they're already having results. 
uh, the, the, the outcomes are pretty good, but Canada's telecommunications regulator will continue to work with the industry to develop technical solutions to combat these criminals. And the, speak, the, the, the member's right. Uh, the banking sector has an obligation to do more as well, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, but we've also got to educate Canadians about the dangers of online scams and all the progress of the countermeasures that are underway. Uh, but education goes a really long way. I know the Milton Library does a lot to educate seniors, so I encourage more people uh, to be cautious and to, uh, to be diligent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.